Good morning. We are gathering for our Obednice service for Sunday, July 5th. Uh, this morning, in addition to our regular prayers during the Obednice service, we'll be taking some additional prayers for our nation. And actually, His Beatitude has uh, put forth a letter for Independence Day that we'll also uh, listen to a little bit at the end of the service. So, remembering a little bit our Independence Day and celebrating our Abednesa. Glad you're here to join us. Please pray together with us. Blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of above and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For our holy house and for those who enter with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our most blessed metropolitan teak, our loyal companions of the Diocese of New England, for the honorable priests of the Diocletian Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the president of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, for abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For travelers by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our Lord. For unto you are to all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Blessed are you, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within. And again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Commemorating our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. For yours is the majesty, and yours are the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the Trust 
and princes, in sons of men in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to his earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Happy is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose help is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord looks at those who are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord watches over the sojourners, he upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin, the Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, now and ever and unto ages of ages, amen. Only begotten Son and immortal Word of God, who for our salvation was to be incarnate of the Holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, who without change became man and were crucified, O Christ our God, trampling down death by death, who are one of the Holy Trinity. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. Help and save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord of mercy. I'm praying our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and each other and all our life unto Christ our God. Lord. For you are a good God who loves mankind, and to you is my glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages.
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, holy, mighty, attend the peace be unto all and to your spirit wisdom for keeping on into the third tone sing praises to our god sing praises sing praises to our king sing praises sing praises to our god sing praises sing praises to our king sing praises 
Clap your hands on people, shout to God with loud songs of joy. Sing praises to our God, sing praises, sing praises to our King, sing praises. The seventh throne crashes in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The reading is from the epistle of the holy apostle Paul to the Romans. Let us be attentive. Brethren, having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and of lawless leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and to the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Brethren, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness and self-control against such there is no law and those who are christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit let us not be conceited provoking one another envying one another brethren if a man is overtaken in any trespass you are spiritual you who are spiritual Restore such a one in the spirit of gentleness, considering yourself lest you also be tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Peace be unto your reader. And to your spirit, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. In you, O Lord, have I hope. Let me not be put to shame. Be a God of protection for me, a house of refuge in order to save me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Blessed is a man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. So, Master, who loves mankind with the pure light of your divine knowledge, open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of your gospel teachings. Implant also in us the fear of your blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well pleasing unto you. For you are the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God. Unto you we ascribe glory, together with your Father, who is from everlasting. Your all holy, good, and life creating spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom, let us attend. Let us listen to the Holy Gospel. Peace be unto all. And to your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you. Let us be attentive. At that time, Jesus entered Capernaum, and a centurion came forward to him, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home in terrible distress. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion answered him, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof. But only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. 
and to another come, and he comes, and to my slave do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard him, he marveled and said to those who were following him, Truly I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and sit at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness. Their men will weep and gnash their teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, be it done for you as you have believed. And the servant was healed at that very moment. At that time, Jesus stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd sought to touch Jesus, for power came forth from him and healed them all. And Jesus lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed are you poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you that hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you that weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men hate you, and when they exclude you, and revile you, and cast out your name as evil on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day, and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory be to Jesus Christ, glory, glory forever. Be. Brothers and sisters, we come together today to celebrate our Lord's resurrection, and also to remember the uncovering of the relics of St. Sergius of Rodinesh. Our gospel reading for this morning is about the centurion, a Gentile, a Roman soldier, not one of the chosen people of God, who approaches Jesus and asks for healing for his servant at home who is ill. He is not among the people of God that saw themselves as being that exclusive community, but he was a soldier in genuine need. And as he understood in military terms, when you tell a soldier to go and do something, they do it. And when you ask for something to be done, it is accomplished, he reaches out in that same way, seeing Jesus before him, the high priest, a teacher, a healer, God. And he reaches out and says, Lord, just say the word and my servant will be healed. I am not worthy that you should come under my roof. In the days of receiving communion, our Prayers of preparation include a prayer from St. John Chrysostom, and that prayer takes that very language. I am not worthy that you should come under the roof of the house of my soul. It is a reference to our unworthiness, our sinfulness, our brokenness. So this centurion, not being of the people of God, was aware of his own unworthiness, and yet he reached out to God, not for himself, but for his servant. For his servant that he would be healed and jesus marvels we read in the orthodox study bible that he only expressed marveling on two occasions one was at the time of uh, his being in nazareth his home city and being asked to leave the seeing the people that were faithless and he marveled in that moment and he marvels in this moment seeing the faith of this man this soldier and lifting him up and saying, truly, I have not seen faith like this, even in the house of Israel. And so, brothers and sisters, as we continue our journey in the weeks following Pentecost with the gift of the Holy Spirit, 
and we reflected on the feast of Saints Peter and Paul, especially St. Paul going far and wide and ministering to peoples of many nations, that it is still true today that as we bear witness to Christ, people that may not be of the people of God, who may not know God, who may not know Jesus Christ, but may come forward seeking healing. This is an opportunity for us to bear witness to our Lord, who we know is victorious over death, granting us life, and we pray and hope entrance into the kingdom of heaven. This morning, we also celebrate the uncovering of the relics of St. Sergius of Radonesh, a saint that is enshrined today in the Holy Trinity Monastery just outside Moscow. I had a great blessing in 1983. I was in college. Uh, my parents paid for my sister and I to make this trip with Father John Matusiak, now of blessed memory, to Russia. We visited Moscow, we visited Kiev, even the caves in uh, the monastery in Kiev and in Leningrad, now returned to its real name. Uh, but at the time, we, it was still communist Russia. And I remember just so vividly that when we walked into churches, despite this being a communist regime that had no uh, openness uh, for life of faith, the churches were so perfectly preserved so that the next day, the faithful could come in and celebrate the liturgy. And so there was this, still this respect, this respect for the church. And I had the opportunity to venerate the relics of St. Sergius of Radonezh. So if we reflect briefly on his story, his feast day of falling asleep is in September, but this day actually follows that feast. So he lived in the 13, late 1300s, uh, died in 1392, but he was a monastic and he was a monastic who sought the heights of theosis, of becoming what God is by nature, by God's grace, communing with the persons of the Holy Trinity. Again, reference back to Pentecost. He was so focused on the Holy Trinity and the relationships between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit that he sought to be part of that communion. It is said that he and his disciples were a part of starting almost a quarter of the monasteries that are functioning in Russia. And so this man uh, was called to establish this monastery where they prayed, where they lived. And at the end of his life, he uh, uttered a few words of guidance and direction to his brothers. He said, brethren, be attentive to yourselves. Have first the fear of God, purity of soul, and unhypocritical love. And so he fell asleep in the Lord. St. Nikon became the egumen following him at the monastery. It used to be known as the monastery of St. Sergius, now the Holy Trinity Monastery, um, or, or Lavra as it is called. And so when St. Nikon was now the Agumen, it's in the early 1400s, about 25 years after his death, uh, he appeared in a dream to St. Nikon and said that the Tartars and the Mongols that were overrunning Russia during this time, in fact, his life of monastic life occurred while under the yoke of the Tartar Mongols, but they were coming to raid that particular monastery. And so the brothers took all the sacred items and everything that they could, reflecting also the life of St. Sergius, and fled out into the woods. When they could return again, the monastery having been burned, they rebuilt the monastery. St. Sergius appeared to a pious layman in the town during that time and said, how long will you leave me in the ground and in the water? So as they were rebuilding this monastery, they found his relics and they found them to be uncorrupt same relics that I had the opportunity to venerate in 1983. And so they were brought into the church where they remain. And the other uh, point worthy of note in the life of St. Sergius, again, uh, a pillar of 
monastic life in Russia is Saint Andrei Rublev was known as Saint Andrei of Radonezh. He lived in that monastery and he painted his icon of the Holy Trinity in the same monastery where Saint Sergius had sought to be in communion with the Holy Trinity. And so we have this, uh, maybe that's a part of our OCA still clinging to more the monastic rite than perhaps the cathedral rite in our worship, that we use so many psalms in our worship, that we have the monastic elements, but it is in keeping with this deep, deep monastic vein that runs through the Russian Orthodox Church and has been brought here to our country through the monasteries that are functioning here. And so we give thanks to those like St. Sergius uh, who lived during such a difficult time, such as we are living in now, though we're not overrun, we're overrun by a pandemic. Uh, but he did not lose hope, he did not lose faith, but rather increased his faith and lived in God's light and love, encouraging us to do the same. So I would like to finish with reading the Kentuckian that our choir sang just a moment ago. Having risen from the earth today and shining like the sun, his remains being removed, your precious and incorrupt relics are as fragrant flowers, scented with miracles, granting healing to all the faithful and making glad your flock, which you wisely gathered and tended. Now, as you stand before the throne of the Trinity, entreat God's help and grace for them and for all Orthodox Christians, so that we may sing, Rejoice, O divinely wise surges. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Let us say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us say. Let us say. O Lord Almighty, the God of our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great goodness. We pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for our most blessed Metropolitan Teacon, Lord, companions of the Diocese of New England, for priests, deacons, and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ. Again, we pray for the president. Again, we pray for the president of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the blessed and ever memorable holy Orthodox patriarchs, for the blessed and ever memorable founders of our holy house, for all of our parents and brethren, the Orthodox departed this life before us. Especially Makushka, Nadine, Peggy, Nina, Oleg, Yelena, John, Greg, and the servants of God, Alan and Ilya, and who hear and in all the world by asleep in the Lord. Again, we pray for mercy, light, peace, health, salvation, and visitation for the servants of God, all the brethren of our community, those that we hold in our hearts and in our minds. For those who are sick and suffering, especially a former metropolitan Theodosius, the priest James and Patrick, Makrishki, Natasha, Anastasia, and Macrina, the servants of God, Robert, Victoria, Charles, Anastasia, John, Sonia, Roseanne, Elaine, Catherine, Delia, Maria, Corey, Damien, Joseph, Kira, Louise, Lucy, David, Anna, Christopher, Carol, Dorothy, Anne Marie, Nancy, Stephanie, Marilyn, Julia, Maria, Victor, Oleg, Bettina, Nicholas, Delphina, for those suffering from the coronavirus, Stephen, Carol, Ann, Ron, Megan, Kevin, Arcady, and Natalie, and for the Archpriest Theodore, having completed the iconographic work in our church, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, Again, we pray that the Lord our God in his mercy and providential care for us will call forth for our diocese of New England, a true shepherd of wisdom and strength, blessing us with an arch pastor to care for the well-being of our diocese and to unite his faithful people in a zealous confession of the Orthodox faith 
in loving service to one another and a bright witness to the glory of his holy name. We beg you, Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Returning thanks with fear and trembling as unprofitable servants, O Lord, for the great benefits you have poured out upon this nation in the years that are past. We fall down in worship and offer you praise as to our God, and with fervor we cry to you, deliver this land and its people from all calamities, and in that you are merciful, fulfill the good desires of your people as is profitable for salvation. We diligently entreat you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That you will bless the years to come with goodness and truth, quenching among us all enmity, strife, and civil discord, giving peace, steadfast, and unfeigned love to your people with all goodwill and a virtuous life. We pray you, O most gracious Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That you will not call to mind the innumerable transgressions of years past and all the evil actions committed in our land, and that you will not requite the people according to their deeds, but will remember this country in your mercy and bounty. We pray you, O most bountiful Lord. Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That you will call to mind your church in this land and establish and strengthen it, increase and multiply it, giving peace and harmony and preserving it unscathed by the gates of hell and invincible against all attacks of its enemies, both visible and invisible. We implore you, O most sovereign Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That you will root out and extinguish every blasphemous impiety of the corrupt and pagan world and speedily crush every falsehood and sin by the power of your spirit, giving wisdom and goodness to the leaders of the people. We beseech you, O most powerful Lord, Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. That you will deliver us in the years to come and through all the days of our lives and will keep this land from earthquake, flood, fire, the sword, invasion of enemies, acts of terror, and from civil war, and from all death, dealing wounds, calamity, and distress. We pray you, O tenderly compassionate Lord, Hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. How can we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and you know, all venerable house, for those who labor, those who sing, and for all the people here present to await your great and rich mercy? Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you are a merciful God and love mankind, and to you we ascribe glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. <laughs> Let us pray to the Lord. Lord of mercy. O God, Almighty, Lord of heaven and earth, and of all creation, visible and invisible, in your ineffable goodness, look down upon us, your people gathered in your holy name. Be our helper and defender in this day of affliction. You know our weakness. You hear our pride and repentance and contrition of heart. O Lord, who loves mankind, deliver us from the present threat of the coronavirus. Send your angel to watch over and protect us. Grant health and recovery to those suffering from this virus. Guide the hands of physicians, nurses, all of our caregivers, the chaplains ministering to them in our military reserve, supporting them. And, pre and we pray for those developing vac vaccines and treatments and preserve those who are healthy. Enable us to continue to serve our suffering brothers and sisters in peace, that together we may glorify your most honorable and majestic name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Remember us, O Lord, when you come in your kingdom. Remember us, O Master, when you come in your kingdom. 
Remember us, O Holy One, when you come in your kingdom. The heavenly choir sings to you and cries, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Come unto him and be enlightened, and your faces shall not be ashamed. The heavenly choir sings to you and cries, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The choir of holy angels, archangels, with all the powers of heaven, sing your praises and you cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages, light of light, true God of not made of one essence with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became man. And he was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered, and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, his kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets in one holy catholic and apostolic church i acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins i look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the remit, pardon, and forgive our sins, whether voluntary or involuntary, whether by words or deeds, whether in knowledge or in ignorance, whether by day or night, whether in mind or thought. Forgive us all these, for you are good and love mankind. Our Father, who art in who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Lord of mercy, 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 Lord have mercy. O all holy Trinity, mighty one in essence, kingdom undivided, origin of all good things, be graciously inclined also to us sinners, establish us, give understanding to our hearts, and purge away all our vileness, enlighten our minds that we may glorify, sing praises, and adore you. And say, One is holy, one is Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, it ends forth and Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forever.
Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Look to him and be radiant, so your faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy is the man who takes refuge in him. O oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh, children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and covets many days that he may enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against evildoers to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the broken hearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He kept all his bones, not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. It is truly me. To bless you, to bless you, O Our God and our sure hope, glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Father. He who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of his most pure mother, the uncovering of the relics of St. Sergius of Rodinus, who we commemorate today, of the holy and righteous ancestor of God, Joachim and Anna, and of all the saints. Have mercy on us and save us, for he is good and loves mankind. Amen. It is wonderful to greet all of you this morning in our Abednego. We thank Heidi and her family for singing Vespers last night and Susan and her family singing the Obednitsa this morning. 
and for Andrew Boyd, our reader reading last night, the Old Testament readings, and today our epistle readings as he is visiting us this day, a son of Holy Transfiguration Church, as well as of St. Alexis Church uh, in Clinton. So it is a joy for us to be able to be together today. Uh, we, as is our practice, I think what we'll do is first um, do our memory eternal in many years. And then I would like to read at least a little bit of Metropolitan Tikhon's letter for Independence Day, because I think it is a very well written letter addressing the struggle that we are presently in, not only with the pandemic, but in the uh, whole uh, racial tension concern that is continuing today. Uh, so I would like to read a little bit of that letter as well. So among those that we're remembering this morning uh, with memory eternal is Ilya, uh, our Larissa Corman's husband, uh, who is reposed in the Lord, and also Helen, who is the mother of John Scrobat. And John and Joan have been frequent uh, participants in our services uh, during these past few months. So we'll ask God to grant memory eternal to them. And also among the... Uh, ones we'd like to ask many years for as uh, Matryoshka, Brenda, Barbara, who is uh, Mikitish, who is celebrating her birthday this week. Grant rest eternal and blessed repose, O Lord, to the souls of thy servants of God, Ilya and Helen, who have fallen asleep, and make their memory to be eternal. Peaceful and prosperous life, health, salvation, furtherance, and all good things, and all thy blessings unto the servant of God, Makrishka Brenda Barbara, on her birthday, and protect and preserve her for many years. God grant you many years, God grant you many years, God grant you many, many, many. Grant, O Lord, a peaceful and prosperous life, health, salvation, furtherance, and all good things, and all thy blessings unto thy servant, the Archpriest Stephen, on the anniversary of his ordination to the priesthood, and protect and preserve him for many years. God grant you many years, God grant you many years, God grant you many, 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 many Thank you for that. Uh, it is the 28th anniversary of my ordination to the priesthood, and I had so hoped that uh, by this time we would have been back at church to celebrate the liturgy because it's only so many years uh, that my anniversary date falls on a Sunday. Uh, it was a great joy on the 25th anniversary of my ordination. I was at St. Pecan's at the time, and I had arranged to be able to celebrate the liturgy that morning at the monastery church. So it was a, a great joy. And so that is another connection uh, that I have to St. Sergius of Radonesh as I was ordained uh, on his feast day by the uh, now reposed and ever memorable Archbishop Job. So uh, it's a day that uh, I'm filled with reflections on and we, I pray that I will be able to continue to uh, serve in the priestly role and to be a guide uh, as we continue on in the life of our community. So thank you very, very much. 
Uh, is the attitude uh, Metropolitan Econ, as I said, uh, distributed a letter to be shared on our Independence Day. We took the extra petitions this morning. And so I uh, just want to read a portion of it, but I think it's a, a meaningful letter that needs to be shared uh, in our troubling days here. He begins by saying, my beloved brethren, blessed children in the Lord, I wish you all a happy and safe 4th of July. As this Independence Day comes in the midst of a viral pandemic and renewed social tensions, it is fitting to recall that the fundamental principle that we celebrate today is that all men are created equal. Let us joyfully let freedom ring as we celebrate this American principle. And he says, yet we must admit our nation remains in travail, struggling to give birth to a society in which we all are treated as equals. Despite some progress, racism has not been fully stamped out. As the church in which there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, we oppose racism, for we believe that all are one in Christ Jesus. And he continues, crucially, evils such as racism are only stamped out when each of us individually takes responsibility for his or her actions. Each of us has the independence of free will to choose to do good or evil. The claim that groups are responsible for evil rather than individuals is a claim which risks ignoring individual free will. So he writes, we must search out the evil in our own hearts and labor to remove it and then let Christ enter and take his place in our hearts. Then we will see social change. We take responsibility for the evil we contribute to and then act responsibly to make Christ's kingdom present now through our words, deeds, that change will happen. And so he closes the letter saying, this Independence Day, let us remember that freedom is not just an American ideal, but a sacred responsibility given to each of us through our God-given free will. We are each independent to do what we will, what we may will, but through following the example of Christ, may each of us do the will of his Father always, this day and every day. With love in Christ, Tikhon, Archbishop of Washington, Metropolitan of All-American Canada, and our locum tenants. So I will be posting this letter on our website so that those who would like to see it uh, in full or review it uh, may be able to do so. But for now, God bless and be with you. And uh, for our Holy Transfiguration community, we'll proceed to our virtual coffee hour in just a few minutes.